Welcome everybody to Funeral Nation episode 206. I'm Ryan Thogmartin, that is Jeff the Funeral Commander Harbison, and this is the Funeral Profession's only weekly news and entertainment show that's honest. You know, uh, unfortunately and fortunately today, um, we aren't using a Ouija board, we're going to talk about experience. <laughs> we are, we are yeah, going to talk so, about experience. Uh, and there's no way for us to make this happen without our friends and my co-workers at CNJ Financial. So let's go ahead and run their promo before we get started. We may be the largest insurance assignment company in the funeral profession, but that doesn't mean we've lost touch with our roots. Here in Rainbow City, Alabama, our priorities still come down to a welcoming smile and a handshake that says we keep our promises. With all the tools and technologies that assure blazing fast turnaround, what really matters is much more old school. Personal responsibility, integrity, relationships, and the pride that comes from hearing yet another client say, you came through for us when it mattered. CNJ eliminates the challenges that funeral homes have in processing insurance death claims. If cash flow is vital to your business, welcome home. So Ryan, we are now officially over the convention season, uh, stre stretched all the way back to uh, March and went through the summer and we just finished the Super Bowl, if you will. Yeah, yeah. And so uh, you and I have discussed at length and with a lot of people um, how they felt about these. So why don't we kick off with the positives that we've seen from this virtual convention season? I think there's two sides to a convention, right? You have the the attendee side and then you have the exhibitor side, right? And so I think there's there's positives on on both of those fronts, but they look massively different. So I mean, I think if you were an attendee of the virtual conferences and look, let's shout out Kana Kudos for for being the first big conference to to go virtual. Um if you were an attendee, this, these virtual conferences had to be extremely, extremely valuable. You were able to kind of make your own schedule. You could watch things on demand. They're going to stay online for extended period after the conference. So you can watch them again and again, if you want to. Um, more people that typically wouldn't get funded by their company as a funeral director to go to a conference were able to attend. So as an as attendee, I think these conferences were extremely valuable. Vendor side, um, you got the opportunity to support the associations uh, at, at, at a lesser cost. Um, booth space didn't cost as much as if you were in person. You could have more team members experience a convention because there, you know, there wasn't travel and things like that built into it. Um, uh, but from a you, say, yeah, <laughs> see, you're stuttering now. That's where uh, you need the old commander to take over because, dude, <laughs> um, I haven't talked to one supplier. And I'll say I've talked to more than 10 over this convention season that called virtual conventions a success from their company. And what I mean is that uh, the supplier vendor was online, they were in their booth space and virtually no one stopped by, no conversations, maybe a light hello. And most of those were from other supplier vendors who were bored and, you know, no new business, okay? And so, you know, to dissect that, we'll kind of set that off to the side now, but mm -hmm. I, I do want to go back to the positives. Yeah. One of the things that um, uh, we just came off NFDA, Simon Sinek, um, I, I want to give kudos to him and how that presentation was handled. Uh, they did demonic care, just I like that sort of format. You and I use that here. Mm -hmm. And I think that they got a lot more out of it. They were interactive with the questions and did yeah. wonderfully. Um, well, I mean, I think we, I, I made a call in the, in the live chat on, on that presentation, that Q and a format, 
one, John LaFran did a, a fantastic job Absolutely. moderating that conversation, asking the right questions, making it conversational, uh, just phenomenal job. Like, I think the moderator in that scenario uh, has a lot of weight on their shoulders. It's really dependent on them whether or not that's going to be a valuable conversation. So home run to, to him. Um, but I, I made the comment, I tagged Christine and, and Anthony in it and said, I really think that going forward, whether we're virtual or in person, the keynote should be that type of format. There were 762 people at one time live watching that, hundreds of comments coming through in the live chat, which was extremely valuable um, because there were there were questions being answered. There were questions being pulled by John and asked to, to Simon. Um, that, that conversation went far deeper than he could have gone in a 45 minute seminar. So Agreed. that was insanely valuable. Best, uh, I'm gonna say in, in the, let's see, I've been going to NFDA conventions for 12 years. So in the 12 opening kickoff ceremonies that I've attended, that by far was the, the best and most valuable one. I, I, I firmly concur. Uh, it, was, it was as good as you can get. And I yeah. liked it because what was interesting is that the people who were watching, their questions were being addressed rather than a speaker just droning on about what he thinks are ideas. So that's a huge thumbs up. Uh, another yeah. thumbs up, I'll say that uh, certainly from a perspective of education, uh, NFTA, uh, Kana, the others did a wonderful job. If you're an attendee and you were able to get some CEUs, much less watch someone you know, from the wherever you are, you could watch mm -hmm. them literally embalming a body <laughs> and attend the class at the same time. Right. So, um, and you know, we're, I'm going to give a shout out to our friend Monica. Uh, mm -hmm. Monica Torres had a wonderful seminar and uh, really proud of her. And of course, CNJ, we sponsored her. But, yeah. uh, you know, I saw a, a positive, very positive spin that direction. Um, one other thing that uh, I'm going to just ruthlessly go after is that the entertainment, if it wasn't for CNJ and, of course, our friends Foresight, nothing would have happened. The, right. You attended the cigar party. I All did. 50 attendees were there. It was so much fun. Um, Paula Masters mixed up a cocktail. And it was as if we had 50 friends together um, just talking. Andy Lopez, yeah. you know, yeah. <laughs> he, I would, he I would have serenaded us. I think that, that that event was more valuable the way that it happened than if we all would have been at the conference because you wouldn't have never been able to get that group of, of men and women together to have an hour and a half conversation at a conference. We're, we're going different directions. So that was insanely valuable. Yeah. And, you know, it, it wasn't all about business. We had some anecdotal stuff. We talked. Yeah, it was perfect. You're right. And mm -hmm. if we were in person, I don't think all 50 people would have got to hear from one singular person. So, you know, one of the things that uh, Jamie and I talked about is uh, we may do this on a monthly basis, not sponsored, but just getting together, you know, yeah. and say, hey, uh, Wednesday night, seven o'clock, bring a cigar, bring a drink. Let's get online and just enjoy each other. No, nothing about yep. the business. Um, Vicky Amato last night put on a show. If you weren't there and you're a funeral professional, shame on you. You missed world-class entertainment. She just knocked it out of the park. And uh, thank you, Vicky, Doug, and the Foresight folks, and of course, CNJ, for bringing that to us. So, you know, those are the positives that came out of it. Um, I'm going to tell you my thoughts and this is uh, not endorsed by any body, but this is this is my observation from the field. Okay, I think that we're going to have some issues going forward from here. Number one is we just went through an entire year without getting together. Okay, without really, from a supplier standpoint, gaining any business. We spent money, not much of an ROI. And also, funeral professionals didn't attend in droves like they have at other live events. Are we going to become immune to attending events now, especially if they're in person? Because if you look at it, 
you know, we had the unconference. There's a, there's a seminar a day now. So there's no real purpose, right? You can pick up anything you want. It's recorded. Most of these things are free now. Are we going to become immune to saying, hey, you know what? Um, we didn't have the convention this year the first time in however many long. My business didn't change. My, you know, my employees are still getting their CEUs. Pick a subject, pick a subject. I think that's going to be the negative outcome that we're going to have to pay attention to in the future. What say you? I do not disagree with you. Um, I, I do see from from a value standpoint on the funeral home, um, it, it's really putting more emphasis back on the supplier network, to be honest with you. Um, suppliers are going to go, oh my gosh, we need conventions. We need to be able to go to dinners and we need to be able to wine and dine and we need that exposure and to be able to make a big hoopla. However, those suppliers that have embraced the time period that we're in and taking their exposure into their own hands and not relied on a conference, they're winning. I mean, look, you and C and J, you're, you're doing webinars each month. You're creating content like this. You did live events. You have a huge social media presence where you can reach anybody and everybody that you need to overnight without having to fork out tens of thousands of dollars for a three-day event. So I think that the the supplier network it would be affected more from not having conferences than the the funeral director or attendees are going to be affected now that said the same thing you and i have been preaching at, at funeral homes and cemeteries for the last five years we now need to to speak to our own kind of network of suppliers that if you're not embracing technology and you're not taking exposure into your own hands the value that you know just from our company disrupt the value that we've gotten through the pandemic of of it forcing us to be intentional with better content more repetitive webinars every single month and we're giving away more than we've ever given away before that's a wit like that that it, it's been insanely positive so you know, we're, we're in control of our own destiny. And I think that for the his, history of the profession, we've relied on the supplier network to support associations through a conference. And we've relied on the conferences as the supplier network to get exposure. And we're realizing that, holy cow, we haven't had a salesperson on the road in a funeral home in the last seven months, yet we're connecting with more clients than we ever would have because our time is better used virtual on a Zoom call. And, and don't get me wrong, and, and I know you echo this, we've talked about it. This virtual interaction can never fully replace a knee to knee conversation and the value of that. I'm not saying that. What I'm saying is that we've relied on a lot of other things and events to build our brands that now we got to take some onus and, and own up to the fact that we're in control of the exposure. We have all the tools that we need to have the conversations that we want to have. Do I look forward to an in-person meeting? A hundred percent. I had an in-person meeting here in, in Utah a few weeks ago, talked with the funeral director. He said, look, I can come to you. You can come to me or we can do it by Zoom. And I said, I don't want to do it by Zoom. By, by, by Zoom. If you're cool with getting together in person, I would love some interaction. So I, it's not that I don't want that. I'm just saying that we, we've, we've, gotten kind of conditioned through this year exactly like you said we've we've crested over this hill where we haven't gone to a conference in eight months my business isn't any worse off than it was if i would have gone you know i mean it it didn't impact me so there's plenty of is, opportunities is that a watershed CEUs. moment you know it is. And, it is and the the live conventions and so you know funeral professionals have had to adapt uh organizations have had to adapt suppliers have had to adapt i think we're looking at a new normal in the future in fact you know uh, iccfa is in the spring and uh, i believe it's been pushed back from march to may yes uh, vegas is technically not open for business and not having conventions and you know you and i said it also there's a certain large segment of our funeral profession um from an aging standpoint that attend conventions 
that simply I think are going to be challenged to do that in the future. Um, mm -hmm. Because, hey, guess what? Flu season's here. Yeah. Um, coronavirus isn't going away. And um, I don't know. But what I do know is if you didn't adapt, you'll never overcome. And it's time. You've, uh, you and I have sure. been preaching that literally for five years now since we were Absolutely. in Absolutely. And, well, and think yeah. about this, Jeff, if you look at the the exhibits that CNJ has been at and the conferences that you virtually exhibited at, if you add up all the interaction that you had from every single conference this summer that you virtually attended, you didn't have as many conversations as, as much value as you did in a one one hour event that you made invite only during during the NFDA conference. Um, that, you know what? Where you that's take it into your hands. Solid that truth. was better. Yeah, that's I mean, it's... the truth. Yeah, and so uh, it'll be interesting uh, where we go from here. But the bottom line is, uh, we're now in the future, and it's we going are. to be interesting to see where we go from here. Because quite simply, it's never going to be the same. You know, the the funeral profession is a a, a whimsical remembering of when the good old days were <laughs> and not a bad thing you know what but uh the good old days may have come to an end as far as some of that's concerned i'm not saying we're not having good days now right. Um, right. i'm saying that we're having good different days and if you're not yeah. up to par there uh it's not going to work uh, it's going to well, be well, challenging Let's make one thing clear too. We're not knocking on the associations. The associations no. have done the absolute best that they could possibly do given the circumstances and, and what was presented. Um, there hasn't been great virtual conference software. Like there's companies that have launched through this time period to provide a need. So limited in what, what they could use software wise to put on a virtual conference. Kana it was the first like this got dumped in their lap they were the first to go virtual and and then we've been able to learn with each conference that followed so the associations did the absolute best that that, that they could do kudos to every association and look and in, in no way are we saying that we don't need conferences because we don't need to support the associations. That's not it either. Um, the supplier network is always going to support the associations because they're valuable and they're needed. Um, so, I mean, no, and by no way is this a knock on any of the associations where we think they dropped the ball and didn't do a good job. No. They did the absolute best that they could in the time frame and what we were given to work with. Um, so, you know, my hat's off to, to Kena and NFDMA, the state associations, NFDA on just doing, I, I can't imagine the nightmare it was to try to orchestrate all of this in the short time period that they had to do so. Um, so I don't think that the, by any means is anybody knocking any association like they could have done better because I don't think that they could have. No, and that's a wonderful point. It is, isn't an indictment on effort. It was an indictment, frankly, of just that's the way it is. Yeah. And so, you know, there, there may be a solution that comes up between now and the time that we start back again. Um, but uh, we're blessed. You know what? Yeah. The show keeps going on. Families are still being served. Funeral professionals are getting educated. They're getting their CEUs. Um, the organizations are still supporting the funeral profession. There's a need for that. Um, it's just a, you know, a glaring gap that, frankly, I don't think most funeral professionals even consider um, from a supplier side during these type of events. Yeah. You know, we're just always there. But so uh, it's, it's a part of the you're, conversation. You're exactly right. And, and I, one more thing, and I, I think you and I touched on this as well off camera, but um, the opening ceremony uh, or opening whatever you want to call it, the opening of, of NFDA. Um, I think that, that Bryant Hightower and Christine Peppers did a great job eloquently, chronologically kind of going through this time period that we've all been through and, and highlighting how the profession has stepped up, 
um, the four and a half, five minute video from Funeral Service Foundation of all the things that they have done um, and been able to give in terms of PPE and supplies and um, money, over a hundred sponsored uh, attendees of the NFDA conference. Like the, this profession is really just leveled up through this time period. And I think NFDA did a great job at the beginning of the conference, really highlighting just how the profession stepped up um, over the last seven months. So I, I think that's important to mention. Yeah. Yeah. Again, if you're watching, you're saying, oh, these two guys are bad. Said, We're not. We're just, hey, I didn't make the news. <laughs> We're just right. reporting the news, you know, and that's part of our objective is to to be objective and give different perspectives from different places where a lot of people just maybe never have considered. But in any event, uh, any virtual event, uh, this is uh, the end of this season for the most part. Mm -hmm. There's one or two little conferences here. But uh, I think that, you know, we, we got through this year so far. Uh, what we don't know yet is what to come. Yeah. And so uh, that's including uh, a contentious election. Uh, we're, we're worried about what's going on in our economy. I mean, this is, we're not done with crazy yet. Okay. Right. We're, we're still in there. But anyway, you know, uh, what I am grateful for is you and I, five yeah. years, you know, five holy years. smoke. I got some more white hair that came up in here. I, I keep putting that in to look mature, you know, when I go get my that's hair. That's right. But, uh, I figured you did. Yeah, look at you getting older too, man. I mean, that's a big I deal. Am. Look at this. Baggy child. eyes. <laughs> yeah, cut those. Anyway, buddy, thank you. And uh, thank everybody for, you know, we, we'd like your input. You know, if, if you disagree with us, please, you know, write it out, send it to us. Uh, if you agree with us, share what your experience was. Yeah. I, to, to finish, very positive for attendees and the content and the way it was presented from across the spectrum, okay, mm -hmm. from all of the organization. From a supplier side, uh, we have some work to do. There you go. That sums it up. All, all right, right, brother. Until next time, have a great effing week. Out here.